Welcome to Bad Language, I'd say, but uh, uh, can I get a round of applause for people who haven't been to Bad Language before? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, for your purposes, uh, the way the night works, we're going to have uh, the, the, the night is split into three thirds. Uh, the first third is our amazing open, ma open mic acts. The uh, second third will be our amazing headliner, who is tonight, Marley Rude! <laughs> open mic acts. Uh, so I'm going to kick off the open mic uh, with our first performer. Um, just to let all the performers know that tonight is being filmed. Um, they're very well hidden cameras. Um, you will not notice them. Um, but if you don't want your performance filmed, just come and let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll erase it from history. Um, but please, please give a massive, massive round of applause for our first act is Tom Quay! Yes, my name is Tom Quay, and uh, this first poem is about loss, and it's also about Woolworths. Um, this is called You Remind Me of the High Street. Now, I mean this politely, but you remind me of the high street. The end is Nye Street. The street's all affected by the same disorder of same shops, different order, constantly marauded by hordes of hoarders, a land of twats dressed for Nat West. I will collectively box the next group with a collection box. Angry because certain shops have gone, yet here I remain. I mean, did people just get bored of borders? I'm on the border. And I was just a virgin emerging when they closed the mega store, but I debated what a war was worth when I discovered the end of Woolworths. So that's why you remind me of the high street. You remind me of those shops and places that are no longer open, that now reside only in your mind, but a part of you is still hoping that they return the same way and that nothing is broken, but it's all half memories, like first sentences spoken. So walking around now, I don't look. Around here, it seems like Cathod and his ox family have moved in, but I don't want their charity. Maybe just less familiarity, so when I spot the abnormality of an abandoned Woolworths, I question if my clamouring for pick a mix had just threw me into hysterics. But it's really there, and right there I realise it's worth double of you. I bathe briefly in the red glow shining down off that big dusty W. There are three O's in Woolworths, and I can't help but say, ooh. <laughs> so I walk closer and closer till I'm finally reunited. The signs scream trespassing, but I practically feel invited until I find that the doors are bolted and the locks are tightened. So as close as I can be to the inside, I begin to, I, I peer inside, and then it all becomes clearer inside. The place that I remembered had vanished away. Acres of toys and games now equated to a trashed alleyway. The checkout's checked out, but the rest was a riot a tip. Not the shop I was so fond of remembering. It was sad to see, but what dawned on me was that things change without of your grasp. So everything is going away. I can continue rhyming on this storefront. I'll just say that we're only on this crap rock for a snapshot, hoping that we don't go out holding down caps lock. So don't let the past become a padlock. Thank you very much. And um, this next one is a uh, rallying call for celibacy in poetry. Um, <laughs> It's called Sex is Not a Poem. Though it's almost always the answer to some ill-formed analysis, poetry is truly about as sexy as flaccid paralysis. It's making me sick, positively tragic that when I get enthusiastic about forceful rhythms, people look at me weird when I only mean iambic. It is depressing that these differing disciplines have now merged and twinned into a dizzying, dismal spin. Because I don't want to pen prose about heads and toes. I'm not interested in the scratch and sniff of slapping skin or getting beneath each other's packaging. To me, that's the opposite of tantalizing. I prefer daydreaming and fantasizing about you and how we first met, you remember. It was the last train out the station on the last night of November. A midnight carriage and you'd forgotten a pen. I passed it across and apologized as I was chewing it again and again, because right there, right there no critic can interpret that first moment that we flirted or how the butterflies were inserted. And later, Later, there'd be no subtext to the way you undressed. So no, sex is not a poem. Forget intonation or personification. It's a formless mess of gratification. Fornication leads to infatuation and insemination. There's none of the beauty or extravaganza of a stanza. It's mostly just trying to work out where your hands are. Yeah. So it's titillation, not alliteration. 
enjoy, uh, enjoying the moment without enjambement, because that's what a bed is for. Uh, <laughs> that's what a bed is for, not for some silly sexual metaphor, because today it seems a sin to be without a lustful simile, so no, sex is not a poem. Neither is it a villanelle or a haiku, it can be a quiet afternoon or a typhoon or a sonnet that reaches its 14 lines a little too soon. It happens to more poems than you would think. <laughs> so, so, bad sex is a good poem. It's easy to understand and often underhand. But good sex is a bad poem. It's wordless, with references that only two people can truly understand. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah.